Do you know, I'm quite looking forward to this evening. I promise you'll have fun. We fixed up a bit of a surprise for her. Be a giggle. And you say I've met her before, cos I, I can't remember. Yeah, Frank and Peg's dinner party last month. Tallish woman. Laughs like a donkey giving birth to a Skoda. Oh, my God, not her. Yeah. I can't believe it.
Oh, morning, bye. Morning. Gotcha. Morning. How was the gig at the rugby club? No aggro? Well, one or two minor scuffles. Not a good handle. As I was walking down Broadway, not intending to stay very long, I encountered a charming young maiden as she gaily came strolling along. Dear, yeah, look at that. Perfect for tonight's gig. There you go. Oh, you are joking, Thomas. Oh, no, come on, look, there's plenty of give there. A nip and a tuck here and there. No, just don't leap about so much. It'll hold. Oh, he's a real pussycat. Now, listen, you. You just carry on temping like we agreed. Leave the artistic side to me. I don't quite know how to tell you this, but you are too artistic what a spoons player is to the London Philharmonic. Uh, hello. Remember me? It would help if I knew where tonight's gig's at. Right. Um, yeah. That's your spiel, as penned by the master. And you're to go to, yeah, North Bank General Hospital, admin block entrance 8.30. See a Dr. Beam, all right? Oh, no. Sorry, Thomas. I won't do this one on my own. You'll have to come along, lovey. Oh, no, you don't need me. It's only a bunch of doctors. Only a bunch of doctors? Listen, the last time I did a gig down there got mauled about something wicked. My bum was black and blue for weeks after, and they tried to knock me for cash. They're a bunch of hooligans. And I'm sorry, Thomas. Don't look at me, Sunshine. I'm strictly part-time admin. I don't get involved with the artistic side of things. All right, all right. I'll try and sort something out. See you later, then, pussycat. Bye, Sal. See you, bye. Well then, Mr. Gin, Bango's our romantic dinner for two at my place. Pity, really, I had such evil intentions for afters. Listen, I'm... Lively! That is some ample woman. <laughs> it won't come any ampler. Well, she's a lovely girl, as it happens, and, and she's very artistic in her own way. Oh, I'm sure she is. She is, she is. <laughs> oh, no, I know that heathen smile, and the answer is no, whatever it is you're after. Lively. No. No, no, as in no, not on your Nelly, no. Oh, I'm not on your Nelly type, no. Sounds very serious. Listen, think about it, Lively. I mean, you're missing out on the opportunity of spending a couple of hours with one of the truly great artists. Great artist. She's a roly-poly strippogram, you bloody chancer. Yeah, but rubbing shoulders with some of the finest medical minds this country's ever produced. I mean, educated men, educated brains. I mean, these are the sort of people a man such as yourself can relate to, Lively. <laughs> Masala. Do you want a bit? Oh, that's lovely. No, oh, I see. Nice cosy little do for two, eh? Yes, it is a nice little cosy dinner for two. And yes, before you ask, it is Thomas and me. Ah, you mad you? You're off your rocker. Thank you, Pippa. Yeah, well, you are. Nine months here, we're out in Portugal. He didn't even bother to get in touch with you. Not true. Sent me a postcard. Oh, fall about me backyard. One lousy postcard in nine friggin' months. I didn't own him, you know. And not that it's any of your business, but it was me who walked out on him, remember? Well, doesn't it bother you that he was back in the country two months and he didn't bother to contact you? He had his reasons and he explained those reasons to me. And you believe all that crap about him wanting to start up his own business, do his own thing and meet you again on equal terms? Now, listen. You're not being fair. In the two months that he's been back, he's worked damned hard to get that little business off the ground. Business? Hiring out fancy dress costumes and running a strippergram service on the side? You call that a business? Yes, a business. What else would you call it? Running strippergram girls is only one step away from being a pimp. Oh, you better take that. Now, watch your ladies. Hello, Thomas. 
But uh, should I leave and come back a bit later? Now, oh, don't bother. I'm leaving. I hope the wine chokes you. Every chance the price I paid for it. I'll, I'll save you some. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Nothing for you to be sorry about, sweetheart. Ah, she'll come round. <laughs> don't hold your breath. She more or less called you a pimp. Well, there you are. She's coming round already, isn't she? Ready in about 20 minutes, I should think. 20 minutes, eh? Mm. Well, in that case, we could, um... Well, we could, but then what would we do with the other 15 minutes? Oh, below the belt, Mrs H, well below the belt. Where I score all my best points, Mr Jim. Huzzy. And, uh, talking of points, have you tried talking to her lately? Sorry, you've lost me. Pippa, have you? Um, no, no. Not for a week or two. Mm, I wish you would. Well, what's the point? You know what she thinks about me. She talks in barbs and looks in daggers. Yeah, I know, but... Deep down, she still thinks a lot of you. Yeah, with the edge up, she does. You know, she's got me pegged as the bad guy. I mean, she blames me for everything that goes pear-shaped within a radius of 25 miles. 30, actually. Well, there you go. She even thinks it was me who framed Roger Rabbit. You mean it wasn't? <laughs> now, all right, you. If it makes you happy, I'll have a word with her sometime, all right? But what about tonight's menu? Promise? Hmm. Yeah. Scouts on her. Dip, 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 dob, dob, dob. Well, you can wash my underpants and starch. Good. Because, sir, uh, the curry's not going to spoil, is it? I do hope not. And as she'll be down the pub right now, if you get your skates on, young man, bye. <sighs> ah, fair maiden, with art in her heart and lips like cherry wine, someday soon the woman will be mine. Mine to have and mine to hold, mine to pleasure at my will. Don't spare me from poets and poetry. You don't like poetry? Uh, it's not so much the poetry as the people who create it. They think a good life. Our poetry is one of the true fabrics of life, so it is words from the heart. You sound just like my brother. He runs a pub in York. Has these poetry nights once a month. Grand nights they are to all men. Grand nights? The place is wall to wall with weirdos, all mumbling on about the meaning of life and, and making half a pint of cheap bitter last the whole evening. Like I said, they think a good life. He's done so poor as the unknown poet. Did you ever hear of Mick McGinley? No, but I have a feeling I'm about to. Ah, he was a very special man, Mick McGinley was. Portrify the arse off your William Shakespeare any day, so he would. By then, the foremost poets of his day had begun to sit up and take notice. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, they would, wouldn't they? Oh, no, not necessarily. You see, they had to. Not only was he one of the finest poets that ever lived, but he was also considered to be one of the most respected economists of his time. Lively. An economist is someone who knows 365 ways of making love, and has no clue on how to pull a woman. Come on, let's go find this doctor. And don't forget to cash him before I do my stuff. Yeah? Abundantly. Spoken like a true Right, who's next? Well, come, Ed, 
a great bunch of tarts. One of you must fancy your chances. Oh, I'd fancy my chances, love, but not at Paul. You got more chance of being stuffed by a camel up the high street, Eric, to go drop dead, eh? Come here, who's next? Come on in. Rack them up. Rack off. Oh, dear, you lost your bottle, eh? Eh? Give us a pint, love. I don't play with pimps. Listen, sweetheart. I'd seriously consider Eric's offer. He'd be doing you a favour. And a big one at that. You never know, it might be your last chance. Security, everything sweet. And I'm Rex. Um, box got a bit small. No, no, no Pinky fit in there marvellously. Stand by your beds. Quickly, go and fetch Peter. Good evening. And good evening to you. Sounds like a grand holy. Ah, <clears throat> larger box. Uh -huh. uh, good evening. Good evening. And how are you? Fine, Tar, very much. Good, good, good. Uh, Teddy, could you just uh, take the gentleman through and fix him up with a drink? Oh, yes, of course, absolutely. Come along, Inspector. Yeah, yeah. Good. And, and if you'd just like to come with me, my dear. Oh, where are we off to? Party's in there. Yes, yes, we, uh, <laughs> we don't want to spoil the surprise now, do we? Now, uh, it's all planned. You just take this pager and then... Uh... Nah, she don't want to know, sweetheart. The problem is, she doesn't understand us. You can't blame her for that, I suppose. It, it must be harder for her, you know never having been involved with a man. Yeah, well, whose fault's that, eh? Well, what self-respecting bloke's gonna want to get hold of her the way she is? Oh, come on, that's a bit harsh. I think she's very attractive. Oh, no, but it's not her looks that are the problem, is it? All right, then, what is the problem, Doctor? Well, she wants to be one of the boys all the time. She's not one of the boys, and the boys know it. And boys will be boys, as they say, and, well, they tend to notice the, uh, you know, roundy bits and things. <sighs> That is just a load of typical male bull, that is. It's not a load of typically male bull, as it happens, missus. I mean, how can she ever begin to understand me? Well, you, us. The way we are, if uh, she's never experienced love. Or even lust. Well, I've experienced both. And I don't understand us. Do you? So, I set off the bleeper, and then you jump out and do your stuff. Too Clifford. On a special day, I'd like to say a happy birthday in my very own way. Oh, no. Do Clifford, on this special day, I'd like to say a happy We're, um, birthday in my very own way. We're, um... We're nearly there now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd say now that that is a drop of the pure stuff. Oh, yes, that delicate shade, bright and clear as a nun's head on a bright summer's morning. Yeah. <laughs> French? Well, that's Mongolian, actually, yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Have you got a drop of ale? Yeah. Oh, what? Well, yes, actually, we do have a few cans of beer, yes. Um... <laughs> that, that stuff would kill a brown dog. <laughs> yes, well, I said it wouldn't drink it. Listen, if you go through those doors and then down the corridor to the last room on the left-hand side, yes? Mm. Down the corridor, last room on the left.
you get his number? Go on, Nick, pal. Please, in you go, lad. Come on. Hey, hey, get up. What are you doing? Hey, brain dead. What the bloody hell's going on here? One warrant. Now shut up and keep out of the way. You don't suffer from PMT, do you? <sighs> All women suffer from a form of PMT, Dumbo. Some just suffer more than others. <laughs> That's the most lethal combination known to man. What is? PMT and white wine. <laughs> <laughs> Especially cheap white wine. Thank you. Oh, who's, who's, who's? Sal? Sally! Oh, uh, Pippa, just stay there. What's she want? I don't know. Look, take the wine. I'll tell you what, I'll stay here. Get rid of her, will you? Right, I'm coming. You are? They've taken him. God, I'm painting them. Right, fun's over. Um. Oh. Come on, move yourself. Lively's been arrested. It's what? You heard. Blimey. Don't mind me. I won't. Thomas, I mean, they have to tell us. And anyway, you have to be arrested for, eh? Well, what am I, the Bernie Bush or something? I know the same as you, sweetheart. Don't get sarcastic with me, Buster. Otherwise, you'll damn well wish you were the Burning Bush. I wonder about that white wine. Are we miss? Mrs. Hardcastle, Sally Hardcastle. And no, I'm not a relation, just a very good friend. And you, sir? Well, if I was a relation, could I see you? No. Not at this moment in time, sir. You can take your statements and shove it right up where the sun don't shine. Personally, I'll blame the charm school. Stop your shouting, miss. I'm going to keep shouting until you let me see lively. I'm sick and tired of being treated like a kid. I know my rights and I want to see lively. This is all your friggin' fault, you cockney shyster. It hasn't got anything to do with me, you daft scouse cow. It's always getting other people into trouble. Cool. I hope you do jaw wiring here. It's the only way to keep her mouth shut. What are you on about? On the other hand... I want him nipped. You saw him threaten... Shut me. up! Well then, Flower. I don't think you realise the trouble you're in. In trouble, am I now? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, you were caught bang to rights. Bang to rights. That's very original. So were stolen drugs. Drugs stolen from the very same hospital you were nabbed at. Oh, big trouble, me old flower. So why don't you talk to me? Tell me all about it. I've already told you. <laughs> the mystery man who just happened to bump into you and drop all the loot out of here. And there's this vi. The stripper no one can find. Nice one, Paddy. Very funny. Very amusing. Yeah, I can tell you the man is easily amused. I hope you're not trying to take the mickey out of me, Mick. Only I get very upset when people try it on with me. It's a wonder you can even tell. You have the IQ of a gerbil. You Irish git! Who the hell do you think you're talking to? 
My way home, laddo. You're still wet behind the ears. Oh, been here before, have we? I've had my moments. Flower. Now get your face out of mine and start conducting yourself like a proper police officer. On the street. You know what I mean? I can hold you for 24 hours without charging you. Well, they've got sweet FA to charge him with. Look, Pippa, I do understand how you feel, but you've got to put anger on one side and think straight. That'll make a nice change. That's easy for you to say. It's not using jail. For God's sake, will you please shut your big trap and have a breather for a while, will you? I've had it up to here with your moaning voice. Well, what about you then? This is all your fault. Oh, for crying out loud, you two. No, no, don't involve me in this. It's this stupid oh, it's little idiot. it's always somebody else's fault, isn't it? Never Thomas. Never mm. Thomas the pimp. Now listen to me, motor mouth. Oh, Thomas, don't. Stay out of this, you. Put me down. Right. Any idea how much I care for you? You got any idea how much I care for Lively? How much I missed a boat when I was in Portugal? You'll have me in tears in a minute. No. You ain't got a clue, have you? Not one. You haven't got a clue how much I care for her, or for that matter, how much she cares for me. Oh, isn't that lovely? Just shut it! Thomas. Now I'm gonna tell you something now which might make me sound like a right big soft Nelly, all right? I love that woman. Yeah. Now, do you understand what love is, eh? It's a feeling that grown-ups get. So I can forgive you if you don't understand it. But here's the real bummer. I love you as well. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I don't love you in the same way as I love her, but... But nevertheless, it is love. Could you put me down, please? You're welcome. Have you two quite finished? You're still a cockney git. Cup of tea wouldn't come amiss. Three sugars, and easy on the bromide. Thanks! point is, where is she now? I mean, I didn't see it down the nick, did you? No. No. Well, the only answer is go and have a talk to the lady. I'm coming with you. Uh, Thomas, don't you think we ought to leave this to the police, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, sweet. I've had enough of sitting around doing sweet FA. Come on, jump in if you're coming. Yeah, let's go. Now, just a minute, you two. What the hell am I supposed to be doing, eh? Bake a cake with a file in it. Bake a cake... <sighs> with the edge up, buster. Helping the police with their inquiries. Well, it's got to be lively, isn't it? Arrested at the hospital, it all fits. Ah, you're off your trolley. So are they if they think Lively's involved with drugs? You wouldn't know an ash bone from a jelly bean. Well, I know that, you know that, but the old Bill don't. I am sorry, madam, but one of the few things I can be sure of today is that Dr. Beam is not on duty. Are you private or NHS? No, I don't think you quite understand. Yes, you're probably right. It's only my first day. I'm just a temp, you see. Can anyone else help you? No, look, this is rather...
rather an emergency. Is there any way that Dr. Beam can be contacted? Oh, uh, I'm not quite sure. Well, maybe if you tell me what type of emergency, then maybe I can help you. All right. There was a, a party of some description held here last night, and I need to talk to Dr. Beam. Oh, I see now. Personal matters, yes. Yes. <sighs> no, not that sort of... Oh! never told me about this at the agency. Listen, a very good friend of mine is in a lot of serious trouble and Dr. Beam is the only one who can sort it out. Oh, don't shout at me. I'm trying my best. Oh, I'm sorry if I shouted. It isn't easy, you know. And now I've got to go and wash my hands. Oh, no, no. Wait, just tell me how I can get in touch with Dr. Beam, please. Well, I didn't leave his contact number when I went to the airport this morning. He's gone to pick someone up, right? Oh, no. He's gone on his holidays for three weeks. America, I think. Oh, God, no. Oh, no, I'll have to go and wash these hands. They never told me about bottles full of wheat. Yeah, I just... <sighs> Bye. It's me, Thomas. Bye. Come on, wakey, wakey. Bye. Bye. Oh, you! I have a man in here trying to get some sleep. He works shifts, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, love. Uh, you haven't seen Vi by any chance, have you? Tell you, same as I told police not half hour since. Police? They've been round? Aye. Making as much bloody row as you. Thumping and banging on the door. Well, that's a relief, isn't it? Uh, did they talk to her? No. Like I told them, the fat cow left here last night with suitcase packed. Bloody good riddance and all. Suitcase, huh? Come on. Somewhat colourful, past Lively. You've been round the block a few times. Ah, the Red Book. John Lively, this is your life. Matter of routine. Like I said, colourful past. Care to fill me in on a few of the mystery years? Quite a few, I'd say. No mystery, sir. Overseas. Travel broadens the mind, you know. Mm, so they tell me. Dublin police were helpful, up to a point. North Africa, early 60s. The Congo, mid-60s. To the Far East, the early 70s. Real mind-broadening stuff, I'd say. I was introducing the natives to the concept of timeshare and non-stick frying pans. CID wants an extension on holding time, Mr. Lively. Just Lively. And? I think you know the form. I also think you should employ a solicitor. A good one at that. Oh, by the way, your stripper friend, Vi, she's done a runner. Gone off on her travels, so to speak. Very mind-broadening, is that? from here until you let me see Lively. Doing? 
Well, you think that's funny, do you? Had I been in possession of a key, you might have been woken up with a tongue in your ear. How do you know I wasn't? Late night, was it? Well, the gig didn't finish till one by the time I dropped Tina home. It was well after three by the time I got back here. Tina, now, that's the one with the big things and yeah, the long... You could make a cup of tea for us, could you? Oh, my mouth tastes like the inside of an Arab's boot. I'd forgotten that you had a gig on last night. I phoned about ten-ish. Do what? Oh, nothing. So, um... How come it took you so long to get back if the gig finished? Oh, the car played up, didn't it? Oh. Poxy thing. So was that before or after you dropped Tina off? It was after, as it happens. Oh, come on, don't start all that again. You know I don't mess with the girls. <clears throat> come here, you stupid woman. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's for the gig. <laughs> oh, look, 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 you know all the girls who work for me. You've got no problems there. Anyway, if I was messing about with them, I'd hardly do it in the car, would I? I'd bring them back here. I suppose. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it's just that... Well, since you've been back... Yeah, I know, I know. You being here, me being there... Yeah, but we both agreed it was for the best, didn't we? I know we did, but it's sort of different now. When we lived together on my barge, it was easy... That's exactly what I mean. What? It was your barge, your boat, your business. I, mean, I felt like a living lover. Well, it wasn't like that. Oh, well, it did seem like it to me now and again. I mean, look, this place isn't much, but it's my gaff, right? And we can sleep in each other's beds if and only when we want. Do you know the thing I miss most? It's having a damn good row and chucking you out after. <sighs> Don't let them grind you down, old son. Keep your pecker up and your brain alive. Spiro Agno is an anagram or grow a penis. <laughs> there now, you learn a little every day. <laughs> there was a young lady from York who could make ardent love on a walk. She did it... York. A pub for poets in York. We should call in at the police station on the way to the solicitors. Cop shop? Why? Well, firstly, to check out the current situation, and secondly, to show them they haven't got a monopoly on harassment. Well, I'll drink to that. You'll drink to anything. Drink to that and all. Lively! <laughs> Hello, young one. <laughs> Five minutes. Now you're acting like a proper copper, old son. <laughs> I wonder where she is. Locked up in a dark, damp dungeon with any luck. Going to help you, madam. Away, going through. Thomas, Sally. Miss Gull, will you let me out? Slow down. What's all the rush? Pub for poets? Yeah, by tell Lively, her brother's got a boozer in York. Where about in York? York? It can't be that big a place. The historic city of York. Population, 105,000. 40 churches. 365 pubs. My kind of town. Come on. Got to have a pint. I'm spitting sawdust. Typical. Thomas, at a pint of pub, you'll be legless in an hour. You order another pint, Thomas, and you'll be spitting broken teeth. They are, Thomas. Seek and you will find. Come on, then. Hey, there she is.
I'm sorry, sweetheart. No can do. Lively is in deep stuck. You've got to come back and help. I can't. What do you mean you can't? Why can't you? I just can't. I leave me alone. Sorry, Vi. Just ain't good enough. Blimey, I'd, I don't know what to say. Now you can say, Thomas. I know how you'll feel about Lively, but that'll all sort itself out. I'm oh, sorry, sweetheart. But my faith in the so-called British justice system doesn't run that deep. This is really doing my brain in. I'm really sorry, Thomas. I've spent the last six years of my life trying to get it into some sort of order. Order? Six long years. You call being on the run order? Listen, Thomas! I'm a big girl, right? Talk tough, look tough. Good old Vi, she can handle it. Yeah, well, most things I can handle. Going to prison's not one of them. I'd die in jail. I'm, I'm sorry for Lively. I just can't help it. I can't go back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I caught her. Yeah, um, she ain't coming back. What? Oh, that's just great. Right, that's it. No, hold on, hold on. It's not as simple as that. She's a wanted woman. What do you mean, wanted? She's on the run. When she gets involved with the police, she'll end up in prison. Well, that's their problem, not ours or Lively's. No, just calm down a minute, will you? Listen, um, you're not going to believe this. She's... She's wanted for murder. You are? Yeah. Six years ago, she was married. She lived in London. He used to beat her up on a regular basis. One night, she got fed up and <laughs> stabbed him. She's been on the run ever since. Come on. Oh, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. I won't ask what it was you didn't do. I didn't do? What are you on about? What time is it? It's quarter to ten. Now, listen. I've engaged a solicitor for Lively. I'm meeting him down the police station in half an hour. Did you tell him about Vi? Well, yeah, I mentioned her and I explained all the circumstances, but I just couldn't bring myself to tell him that we'd actually found her. So you're keeping her out of it, then? Oh, I might be taking the coward's way out, but I honestly think that that decision's live, Liz. Well, for what it's worth, I think you're right. Are you coming with me, then? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. Hold on. No peeking. Yeah, a sexy little bum. Any more of that dirty talk and I'll confiscate your key. That was sexy talk. Sex isn't dirty. It is if you do it right. Lively! <laughs> oh, bright and wonderful morning. Three, eh? <laughs> they finally saw the light. Three is aboard. Oh, Lively, I just knew, but how... Vi! Vi, we wouldn't have... I know. And truth be known, I was sick and tired of running away. It'll go well for you. We'll help you fight, OK? Thanks, lovely. You treat her well in here. Treat her like a lady. Come on, mate. Uh, Mrs Hardcastle. Oh, uh, oh, that's me. Oh. Uh, James Kent from Mulling, Dunn and Kent. Oh, yes, Mr Kent. Uh, drugs charge, as I understand it. Uh, new case now, Mr Kent. How are you on murders? 
He seems very confident. I'd be wary of a confident QC. The only thing they can be really sure of is their own exorbitant fees at the end of the day. Now, nah, she'll be all right. Self-defence, suspended sentence. Oh, we know all about such matters now, do we, young man? I just know, all right. Are you going to get us a drink or what? Tom is not in. Uh, he was here always. He left about ten minutes ago. He was muttering about doing something for this party in here. Said he wouldn't be long. <laughs> <laughs> like policeman, he's never around when you want one. Well, that would suit me just fine. Why wine the pint of bitter, darling, please? Oh, I might have known you'd not miss out the chance to make a few quit. <laughs> I bring out the beast in him, you see? <laughs> That policeman was telling me what a pain in the bum you were. He said if he was ever in trouble, he wouldn't mind having someone like you in his corner. It was only because I didn't know what to order from the milkman. Anyhow, it weren't just me. Thomas and Sally were great. Especially Thomas, eh? Yeah. <laughs> what are you... Hey? Well, I've found a bit there. <laughs> 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 oh, he's a randy bugger when he gets going. Yeah, Thomas, what's up with everyone, for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Ken. 